Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's May 17, 2020, and I thought I'd just pop on here real quick just to let you know what I've been up to over the last, I guess, a long time now. It feels like it's been forever. We've been kind of self-isolating and trying our best not to go out apart from essentials for probably eight weeks now. I think I calculated that this is probably the eighth weekend that we've kind of stayed at home. I've had to go out for a few things. We've obviously had to go out to do our groceries and do the essential things. And I've worked four days a week as well. And that's something that's unavoidable. And it does involve me having to leave the home. But otherwise, we've pretty much stayed at home since this Friday. It's gone. So that was two days ago. New South Wales have kind of started to relax some of their restrictions a little bit. You're now, for example, allowed to have five people visit your home. You're allowed to gather in groups of 10 outdoors some of the restaurants are allowed to open as long as there's less than 10 people in there at the same time and maintaining social distancing so things are starting to open up and i feel like that it's a really critical time for all of us because if we don't behave ourselves if we flaunt the rules if we just ignore the social distancing that australia new south wales is at risk of developing or going into this second wave of the virus and from all intents and purposes from everybody I've spoken to and from what I've read the second wave tends to be significantly worse than the first wave and Australia has actually done really well in managing to stay on top of things because they acted early and we have been to a great extent responsible for what we've done and that we have not tried to do the stuff that they've done in other countries i.e. silly things like protest against closures break rules and just ignore the government advice and still go out and do stuff and I think because of the hard work we've put in so far touch wood escaping some of the really really bad outcomes that a lot of the other countries are experiencing right at the moment now whether that continues or not really depends on us as a collective the government can only tell us to do certain things and I guess we can only do what we do and we've got no control over the others this is the one time where it all kind of feels like it's a right thing to do to dob somebody else in if you see them doing the wrong thing because obviously it doesn't just affect them and it affects everyone around them it has great repercussions if they don't listen so i think this is the one time but what it's got me thinking and i've made a few previous posts videos what we've managed to do in this last eight weeks and whether we've managed to use this time effectively and whether there's any more time for us to to get started if we haven't actually done what we could have where we've had the opportunity to do seeing that a lot of us aren't out so much some of us aren't at work so we've had more time to spend at home and we've had more time to ponder and think about what our business or what our life could be post covid and i thought it'd be a good time just to have a quick chat to you guys about that so one of the big things for me is I know that I've still been really busy and actually work has been more stressful working in the healthcare profession. The last eight weeks have not been too easy, even though at this point where I work, we are not exposed to COVID, but that's always a possibility. And there's a lot of uncertainty around everything. It hasn't been easy, but I'm not saying that's an excuse because it's time for us to stop coming up with excuses for why we can't do stuff. I haven't done as much as I hoped I could do because of other circumstances but I have tried to do a few things I've had a little bit more time because I haven't been going out on the weekends and such and I've been experimenting with kind of different posts especially with TikTok because I know that TikTok is reasonably new and it's there's a lot of attention on there right now because you could post anything and as long as it's something interesting you'll likely get a lot of views on that and you no longer get that on stuff like Facebook and Instagram or even YouTube for that matter because it's so saturated there's so much content out there a lot of people aren't going to be even knowing that your stuff is there because it's not going to appear in any of the searches it's not going to appear on the first page of anything and you're just relying on people who've already subscribed to your channel or your social media and people who know about you so TikTok's been a great learning curve for me over the last eight weeks I've kind of figured out what works and what doesn't in kind of my own little way um, but one thing is sure is that there is a lot of attention there and if you do something that's remotely funny interesting informative crazy something that other people don't do you're likely to get a lot of eyeballs on your stuff Right now, I feel like that TikTok is still kind of skewered towards the younger population. So a lot of crazy kid stuff. There's a lot of dancing. There's a lot of sports type stuff. 
but I find that some of the stuff that works is, as I said, anything that's a little bit quirky, anything that's a bit adventurous, a little bit funny, stuff like that works really well. Serious stuff doesn't work so well right at the moment unless you have a following, just because the audience isn't quite there right now, but I believe it's going to be and it's going to mature. So if you started putting some of your business stuff there, I suggest you just keep going with that. You will gradually get older people on to TikTok and they will see your stuff. And you've just got to, as I said, make it different, make it interesting. Your TikTok posts can't be the same as the stuff you put in LinkedIn because it's a different audience. When people go on TikTok, they're looking for different stuff compared to what they're looking for when they're on LinkedIn or when they're on Facebook and Instagram. They're looking for a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more entertainment. So if you can do that, that's awesome. And for people who have been sitting at home kind of dwelling and complaining and wishing and complaining that you can't go out, you can't do anything with your business. I really unfortunately have only one thing to say about that is that other people don't care. Like I know that's blunt, I know that's just putting out there, but if you own a little cafe or a club or something that you haven't been able to open for eight weeks, like for example, if I was a full-time wedding photographer now and I relied purely on weddings for a source of income, just like everybody else, I'd be screwed. And realistically, no one else apart from maybe my wife is going to care about that. They might feel bad for you, but everyone has their own problems. And this is the time where you've just got to stop dwelling. You've got to stop complaining. You've got to find ways of actually doing stuff that's either going to help you now. So if you think that you've got enough financials backup to support you through the next six to 12 months or however long this is going to last, and this is the time for you to come up with some quality content to attract new attention, attract potential clients when weddings can happen. I've said that in a previous post. And, you know, a lot of people aren't doing that. They're complaining. They're saying, well, I'm sick of this. I just don't understand what benefit there is of every day just complaining about how you can't go out, how your business is failing, how you can't get any work. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's, it's going to be much more useful if you're proactive and you're out doing stuff. And that's kind of how I feel about this subject. Like, are the restrictions tough? Yes, they are. Is it bad that you can't go out? Yes, but also it's it's a life-saving thing. I personally, for one, don't feel safe going out to a lot of places right now. If you said that I could go to my favorite place, Disneyland, I wouldn't go just because I would feel unsafe and I feel that it wouldn't be the right thing to do. But sitting there and complaining about how you can't go to your favorite restaurant or you can't go to the movies or why sport is inside of these are such minor things like i think right now if you're alive if you don't know anyone who's close to you family or friend who's died because of this you're in a really good position and we should be grateful for what we've got and the opportunities that are going to come ahead rather than sitting there and complaining because there's lots of stuff that we can do you can experiment this is no better time everyone else is not doing anything everyone else is sitting at home doing their Netflix, playing video games. Although I have been guilty of playing Animal Crossing a lot, but that's just fun and it's kind of just something to help me go to sleep. But a lot of people are just dwelling on what they can't do, but there's just so much stuff they can do. I'm, for example, I'm grateful that I've had more time to spend with the kids, with my wife. I've had a chance to actually save money because I haven't been out buying dumb stuff because I just don't go to the mall anymore. I get to try and cook new stuff because we're at home, we can experiment with things. There doesn't seem to be as much time pressure when the kids aren't doing school full time because you're not rushing to get them out of the house. I'm happy the fact that when I go to work, it's rush hour, but right now there's no traffic. These are things that are once in a lifetime experiences and I just don't think that people understand that you've got to look on the bright side of these situations. You've got elderly people. I know how bad that feels. You know, if you're in your 70s, 80s and 90s and you're at home and you feel lonely, that's perfectly understandable. But no one else can do anything about that. You're not the only one. Why not take that time? Use your Zoom. Talk to your family. And if you're really into something, for example, if you're into making bonsai gardens, what better time is it to just document your hobby, take videos, take photos of your of your beautiful little trees and post them and see what happens. You never know. It's not too late to start a bonsai business when you're in your 70s if you've got the ability. But people have to know that this is your interest and this is your hobby. Life isn't just about going out and doing stuff. There's so much stuff you could do at home. There's so much home improvement. There's so much self-improvement you can do. 
you can read, you can watch stuff, you can learn. This is a great time to show somebody your hobbies and what your passions are because you never know how that's going to end. You never know what the result's going to be because of that. There might be someone who's watching on the other end of your video who realizes that you know more about Lilo and Stitch than anyone in the entire world and maybe they're going to make contact with you, they're going to connect with you, they might even want to have you on their channel, they might send you product, you don't know. And this is there's no better time to try them. I mean, really, as I said, if you're not dead, you've got a huge advantage in this situation. And right now, there is so much attention for you to, to, to take up on social media because everybody's at home, everyone's looking for relief, everyone's looking for entertainment. And if you are good at doing the running man, if you're good at shuffle dancing, if you're good at throwing the football, this is the time to show people because there are going to be people who want that sort of stuff and they want to watch your channel. It's it's that it's really that simple. But just being serious for a minute, it's like, you know, with all these restrictions, there is a chance that there's going to be a second wave and things will get locked down. A lot of people are going to get sick and maybe even die. And that's really bad. And I think we all need to be responsible for that. But we also can't sit here and, and worry about it too much. We've just got to do what we think is socially responsible. So just because you're allowed to go out and do stuff doesn't mean you should. I still think that it's really important that we stay home as much as we can. We can still go do little things, but just maintain our social distance. Just beware, clean your hands, don't touch your face. Just your normal stuff that we've been doing for the last two months. It becomes a habit. Now, I can't remember the last time, except maybe in the shower, that I've actually touched my face because I know that you can't and you shouldn't and you know it's become a habit now i've been doing it for two months when i get home i make sure i wipe down my phone wipe down the car keys because of where i work i take my clothes straight into a separate thing and i wash them separately and i make sure that you know i have a shower as soon as i get home so there's no risk that i'm going to contaminate anything in the house and these are just little things and yes it's a pain but we're used to it we've got to do it there's no point complaining about it i just feel like we're in a in a really good position compared to a lot of places a lot of people a lot of countries a lot of governments are trying to desperately reopen their economies at a time where the death toll is still skyrocketing and that scares the shit out of me much more than what is happening here in australia so we've got to be grateful for what we have yes we can't go overseas our family had booked it well hadn't booked but we were in the final stages of planning a trip to disneyland this christmas and it's not going to happen. We know that now. And that's okay. It's a disappointment, but it's okay. Right now, I'm not even sure whether we're going to be able to go next Christmas. But we're just going to have to see. What else is there to do? We can sit here and dwell and be upset and just be cranky about the whole situation. But it's not going to change anything. So I just want you guys to realize that this is kind of a going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You'll likely never see anything like this again. And it's something that you're going to... You're going to remember whether it's for the good or the bad, but I think you have the opportunity to make this a positive in a lot of ways rather than just being dwelling on all the negatives. But anyway, like I just want to give you guys a little bit of encouragement, say I love you guys and hope that you guys are all safe, that your family is safe and that you're able to still get some sort of income to support your family. But apart from that, I think go for it, make stuff put it out there and see what happens. So until next time, I don't know when I'm going to make another video. It's kind of been a little bit scattered at the moment. I've been trying, as I said, a lot of different other social media avenues. So check me out on TikTok and Instagram because that's where I'm most active. I'm trying to do some IGTV for you guys as well. So let's see how that goes. But until next time, I'll catch you later. Stay safe.